Today I'm going to be talking about wide area networking and some of the benefits that have happened over the last few years that can really drive cost savings and can really drive true benefits into your organisations uh, when it comes to your wide area networking. Predominantly, there's been a, a huge um, change and adoption of Ethernet as the main type of network that's been going across for, for, for sites. Ethernet's not a new technology, it's been around for, for longer than IP has been around. But traditionally, networking has always been what they call a layer 3 network. So you would have some sort of MPLS cloud, which will be provi provided by a carrier of some sort, and you connect your sites to it, so there'll be a circuit of different types going to your provider's MPLS cloud. This MPLS cloud is a layer 3 um, service. This means traditionally the, pro the provider will dictate to you what your IP addressing will be on there. Uh, how you should route across your, um, your network, what type of services that you want to be able to on there, if you want a class of service, if you want to be able to control or shape your traffic, these are all services that are controlled inside the cloud by your provider. Now, this is all very well, it's worked for, very, for many years and, and MPLS, or the other term IPVPN is what it's called, um, is still a very viable technology for some circumstances. But Ethernet has come into this space and drives true value of this. How does it do it? Well, Ethernet is a much more of a simpler product. That's the key to this. It, it does not dictate to you your IP addressing. It does not dictate how you should route across your traffic. All it does is provide you with a connection from site A to site B. It uses layer 2. So as a result of this, you can treat your sites as if they're on the same physical LAN. They are connected together essentially by a long patch lead. It means that you as the administrator can control which addressing schemes, which routing schemes you want to run across your wide area network. It allows a great deal of flexibility uh, across them. Now, one of the other key advantages to Ethernet is that traditionally it's delivered over a 10 meg or 100 meg fiber optic cable. That's this bit here. And this is fine if you want to run 10 or 100 meg or a gig connections, but if you are looking at sites which perhaps only require 2 meg or 1 meg, it has always been historically very cost uh, very costly to deliver Ethernet services to those types of sites. What has happened recently is that there's a new technology called EFM, which stands for Ethernet in the first mile. And what this allows uh, service providers to do is deliver the same Ethernet type of connections, but not over fiber optic cables, it's delivered to your site over multiple phone lines, copper. This brings the cost of your ethernet provisioning down because they're not having to dig the streets up to deliver fiber optic cables. And as a result of that, it allows you to bring these uh, smaller sites into your ethernet cloud at a much more cost effective rate. Now if we just um, uh, take our, our approach to building a wide area network and look at this slightly differently. In most cases, Ethernet delivers so much value, so much cost savings against the traditional MPLS network because it's a simpler connection, it's more flexible, it's more powerful for, for, for the user. Um, in most cases, we find that an Ethernet connection is, is more preferable than running a, a layer 3 IPVPN connection over a same fiber optic cable. However, there are cases where an IPVPN connection um, is necessary. For example, you may find that you have a site that is um, in a different country. Let's say you have a site in Singapore. Um, there are no providers um, that can provide an Ethernet circuit across multiple uh, backbone providers into a, um, into a country that's uh, a long way away, like Singapore, from the UK. Um, 
In those types of scenarios, there is a need for a higher managed service, and so you would require a layer 3 um, type of service, which would attach to those types of sites. There are other scenarios. For example, you may find that you cannot get EFM, um, which I've just described, in some locations. It's not available everywhere. And so it may well be that fiber optic cables are too expensive to deliver site services into a site, and therefore you need to use more traditional frame relay copper services, which can be delivered over IPVPN layer 3, but not over layer 2. What we do is that we allow our customers to choose the most appropriate technology for their site, as opposed to enforcing a single WAN, single cloud, onto our customers and saying, well, the vast majority of your sites are, are this, and therefore you need to take uh, more of expensive options on these sites. We say, well, you ch choose the most appropriate one for your locations. And we then allow these clouds to be delivered to a customer by a single um, WAN. As a result of that, um, customers can uh, leverage the advantages of Ethernet, they can leverage the advantages of IPVPN, and they can ensure that they build a solution that is as bespoke as they need it to be to deliver the services they need for their wide area networks. We also have the advantage of being able to bring other services into here. For example, private DSL. Private DSL will allow you to connect to your site via ADSL or indeed more advanced ADSL like Annex M. These sites will typically allow you to connect directly from your site into your organization and will ensure that you can have uh, the communication needed between your layer 2 sites, your layer 3 sites and your DSL sites.